Thank you, President. My matter for the Attorney General yet again relates to the non-custodial sentencing of those who assault emergency service workers. I'm obviously yet to see its precise content and will reserve full judgment until I do. However, I do very much welcome the news from this morning of the Attorney General's introduction of a bill that apparently takes up the long-standing call of Darren Hinch's Justice Party and many other Victorians that minimum sentencing laws in this area need to be strengthened. Unfortunately, until now, we have seen very little enforcement of the Premier's words of the 20th of June 2018 that courts will have to impose a custodial sentence and will not be able to sentence offenders to a community correction order or other non-custodial outcome even after determining that special reasons apply. Among all of the instances of non-custodial sentences for these attacks, it's doubtful there are many clearer examples of the problem than the Aru Arop case from only two weeks ago. Arop has been found guilty of at least 44 assaults, including on three paramedics, two police officers and a protective service officer. Yet, astoundingly, it appears he has never been in custody for longer than 14 days, let alone for any minimum six-month term. Reportedly, he has also continued to rely heavily on a defence of being alcohol affected during these assaults. Frustratingly, however, this is all difficult to verify given the complexity of accessing Magistrate Pithouse's 18th of February sentencing remarks about his decision to merely impose on Arop a community corrections order and an alcohol ban. President, given the latter point in particular, the action I seek tonight is clarification from the Attorney General whether and when, Victorians will be given greater access to court transcripts. I realise that she continues to undertake considerable work in implementing most of the recommendations of Justice Finson's Open Courts Act review, particularly around the reduced use of suppression orders. I am indeed grateful for the briefings of her staff and have provided to our party about that work. More broadly though, I would be interested in knowing if in the future there will be more transparency attached to exactly what judges and magistrates, as well as the prosecution and defence, are saying in Victorian court cases. I recognise this was possible in the recent Haberfield appeal. However, in the Arop example and most other cases, Victorians can typically not even access a transcript of the sentencing remarks, let alone the rest of the proceedings.